On the left, we have what is known as the Cartesian plane. And then on the right, we have this funny looking gentleman who went by the name of Rene Descartes, who was the inventor of the Cartesian plane. So the Cartesian plane might sound like a very fancy term, but in effect, it is a very simple grid-like system that we use to simplify our mathematical lives. So we can see from this diagram that it is, of course, a grid, and that we have a X line running through it and a Y line running through it. So these are what we can then use to determine different coordinates. So we can call this our XY coordinate system. So we can think of this as GPS coordinates on a map. So if somebody were to give you certain GPS coordinates, you could enter them in onto a GPS and it would give you the location. So that is in effect the same sort of thing that we're dealing with here. So like we said, we have an X coordinate and we have a Y coordinate. So we could then plot a point on the grid. Let's say this point over here. And just from drawing that point on the grid, we can then say that this point is the point 4 and 3. Noting that you always write the X coordinate down first and then the Y coordinate. We could also do this the other way around. We could tell somebody that they need to find the point uh, negative 4 and 3 on the grid. And very simply enough, you could then go onto our grid system. We know that the X coordinate is first. So we'll go on the x, x uh, coordinate on uh, the x-axis at minus 4 until we reach the y coordinate 3. So where those two intersect, we then have the point negative 4 and 3. So that is reasonably simple, I would think. Um, and it is. The it does obviously get a little bit more complicated than this. Because we're going to use the system in terms of trigonometry. So you might wonder, how does that work? So another very important point on this grid-like system is the point 0 and 0. So that is this point where the x and the y axis intersects. This is also called the origin. And we will denote that with a capital O in this case. Let's call this first point that we drew on on our Cartesian plane, let's call this A. Then if we were to draw a line from our origin to A, let's call that line OA. And a line down from point A to our x-axis. You will see that we have our familiar right angle triangle that we use in trigonometry. So then what we could do is we could, from our x-axis to the line OA, we could use that as our theta angle. And we could then use this in terms of deriving our trigonometric ratios. So we could say that our opposite side would then be the value on the y-axis, right? So that would be the length of this side of our right angle triangle. We could also then, well in this case it would be 3, but of course the, the side itself would be the y value. Right, so that would always be wide, no matter what the size of our triangle is. And our adjacent side is, of course, the length of x. So we could then use x as the value for the adjacent side. The hypotenuse we'll get to in one of the next videos. Um, but in this case, the most important part is to understand that this is a grid-like system where we can plot coordinates, x and y coordinates, and that we can then determine angles between our line OA, and this line could be, let's say, it's a slightly skew line. Uh, let's call that point B. This could be the line OB. We could then have an angle, let's call that alpha, between our x-axis and the line OB. Um, and so on. So this is just a representation of what we can then do with the trigonometric functions, which we'll get to in detail 
in the next videos.